Hello everyone, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training, and thank you for joining me today. Today's module will look at cluster perforating and limited entry perforating. Now if you're not familiar with plug and perf operations, I do recommend you stop and, and go to my website, uogtraining.com, go to the blog tab and review a five minute overview of plug and perf completions to give you a basic overview of what plug and perf is. Now if you'll recall, cluster perforating is using multiple sets of perforations called clusters uh, in each individual stage and you fracture out of them at the same time. So you set your plug to isolate, uh, fire multiple sets of perforations, and then fracture through them. Now let's zoom in and look at one of these uh, stages during the frag job. So we've got our plug already set, we've already got three sets of clusters perforated into the casing, and when the, uh, we begin our frag job we assume that we have even frag distribution. Now what I mean by even frag distribution is that we assume that the fluid is distributed evenly throughout each cluster. For example, if you have 90 barrels a minute pumped at surface, then you're assuming that you're pumping 30 barrels a minute out of each cluster. Now the reality is, is that friction losses will play a, a huge role in how the fluid actually distributes through each cluster. Because the fluid as it flows down the pipe has friction losses, so it takes, uh, the further it has to travel, the more energy it takes away from the actual fluid. So the top set of perfs uh, has less distance to travel, therefore less friction losses, than the bottom set of perforations. So the distance between it actually makes the fluid distribution look more like this. Because the top set of perforations um, is the easiest for the fluid to go through, so therefore it receives the most fluid. And the bottom set of perforations has the most friction losses, making it the most difficult to flow through and, and takes the least amount of fluid. Now the distance between uh, each set of perforations, it may be tens of feet, and it could be up to hundreds of feet in between each set. So depending on the distance will depend on how much uh, friction loss you have between, but as you go uh, down the pipe even further towards the bottom perf, you have even more friction loss and fluid, flat, uh, fluid flows to the path of least resistance uh, and that's why you see your distribution like this. And that's where limited entry perforating comes into play. Limited entry is a technique to help you rebalance the amount of energy it takes for the fluid to flow out of each set of perforations by controlling the fluid flow volume out of each cluster. So this is just a, a very simple example using very even round numbers, but this we've got our three sets of clusters, and you'll see a, you'll notice a little bit of a difference in the perforation strategy. In the bottom set of clusters, we have five holes. In the middle set of perforations, we have four holes, and in the top set of perforations, we have three holes. Now, the larger the fluid flow area that you have, the easier it is for fluid to flow out of those perforations and into the formation. So, from a fluid flow area the bottom is actually the easiest to enter and the top set of perforations is the most difficult. And what you're wanting to do with your design is you want to make the fluid flow area and the friction losses balance out and therefore whenever you do actually fracture through it you do get that even distribution uh, throughout your perforations. So some of you will look at that and think, well, well, why do we even use cluster perforations? They seem like there's room for error, like it can get complicated. Uh, and the reality is that you don't have to use cluster perforations. It is possible to use pinpoint fracturing or single entry fracturing with plug and perf. You simply fire one set of perforations, fracture, set your plug, fire your next set of perforations, fracture, set a plug, and repeat the process until it's done. But keep in mind, with plug and perf, you do have downtime in between each stage because you have to rig up your wire line, run your plug, fire your perforations, pull out of hole with your wire line, rig down your wire line, rig up your fracturing crew, and perform that stage fracture. And then you'll just repeat the process. So there can be, uh, uh, there's that additional downtime between stages. So the primary driver behind cluster perforations is going to be efficiency. Now let's look at an example uh, from an operator in the Permian, and this is from the first quarter of 2016, 
and they're looking at completion optimization strategies. So what they say in their presentation is they have a 9,000 foot lateral, 150 foot per stage, and 30 foot cluster spacing. So what that translates into is that they have 60 stages in, in the well, 5 clusters per stage, and 300 injection points in the well. Now if you assume 2 hours of downtime between each uh, stage, then that would be 60 stages equals 120 hours or 5 days with a 24 hour fracturing crew. But if you did each individual one for 300 stages, that would be 600 hours or 24 hours, 25 days of uh, downtime. And that's only downtime, that's not including the fracturing job itself. Now the same operator in their presentation goes on to say they're looking to optimize even further. They're keeping their 9,000 foot laterals, they're doing 100 foot per stage, so they're narrowing their stage uh, distance, and 15 foot of cluster spacing in each stage. Now what that translates to is 90 stages overall in the well, 6 clusters per stage, and 540 total injection points. Now once again, we'll go back to that same assumption of 2 hours of downtime between stages. With a 90 stage frack job, that's 180 hours or 7.5 days of downtime with a 24 hour crew. But if you did each individual perforation of 540 stages, that would be 1,080 hours or 45 days of downtime alone on the frack job. Now you can improve your downtime with things like pad drilling uh, and simultaneous fracturing operations, but also a lot of new operators that are uh, just starting with plug and perf, they can have significantly more downtime between stages as well. Uh, it's relatively common with new operators to have 8 to 10 hours or even more downtime between stages. So the more entry points you have, the larger these um, downtime numbers will grow. Well, thank you for joining me today. Uh, once again, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. Uh, to stay tuned for more modules, uh, please connect with me uh, on my website, LinkedIn, or Facebook. And if you have any suggestions for modules you'd like to see, please be sure to reach out to me as well. Thank you, and have a good day.